Section 2.4 is going to be an extension of Venn diagrams. This time your Venn diagram is going to involve three sets. In this section we'll also verify the equality between sets. When you have three sets in a Venn diagram, this is going to break your um, Venn diagram up into eight regions. The, the location where you're going to start typically is going to be the middle region, which is region five. This is where all three of the circles overlap. So if you're looking to categorize things and all three categories have items that are in common, that will go into region five. Next, you want to work on the wedges that touch region five. I typically start with region two, but it doesn't matter. You can start with two, four, or six. And so when you do this, you're looking for items that set A and set B have in common. And then you need to make sure to deduct out what you've already included in region five so that it doesn't get counted twice. Then you'll want to do the next region for what set A and C have in common. Deduct out region 5. Then you'll do the next region for what set B and C have in common. Deduct out region 5. Then you'll want to figure out what is going to go in region 1, which is going to be all of set A. So you need to find all items that are involved set A. You need to make sure to deduct out regions 2, 5, and 4 because you've already included those and the remaining items that are left will go into region 1. You'll have the same procedure for, re for circle B and you'll do the same thing again um, for circles B and C. Last, you want to figure out what's going to go on the outside of the circles. So typically you want to have all of the circles completed first and you want to have those filled in. And then once you know all the items that are going to go in the circle, you take those away from the universal set and anything that's left will go in the outside of the circle in region 8. Let's look at an example just to make sure we've got an idea of what's going on here. So we're going to construct a Venn diagram and they've given us the universal set, set A, B, and C. So you're going to start with your universal rectangle and then since you have three sets, you're going to have three circles, A, B, and C. Okay, and I like to go through and just look at it one number at a time to see what everything has in common. So I'm going to start with the number one. Okay, the number one is in the um, universal set. It is in set A and it is in set C. Okay, so it is shared between set A and set C, but it is not in set B. So we're going to put it in the little wedge between A and C, but not in the triple wedge. Let's look at number two. Number two is in the universal set, and it is in set A, but it is, in, or sorry, excuse me, it's in set B, but it is not in set A, and it is not in set C. So we want it to be in set B only, and not in A, and not in C. Okay, let's look at the number three. It is in the universal set and set C. Not in A, not in B. So we want it to be in C only. The number four is in the universal set and set B. Not in A, not in C. So we want it to go in B only. The number five is in the universal, it is in A, B, and C. Notice it's in all three regions, so we're going to put that right in the middle where all three circles overlap. The number six occurs in the universal set, 
but not in A, B, or C. So it's not in any of the circles, so we need to put it on the outside of the circles. We're going to have the same scenario for the number 7. It does not appear in A, B, or C, so it goes on the outside. The number 8 is in A and C, no B. So we need where A and C overlap, but not B. The number 9 is in A, B, and C, all three. So we'll put that right in the middle. The number 10 is in A and B, not C. So we need where A and B overlap, but we don't want it to touch C. The number 11 is only in C. The number 12 is in A and B. The number 13 and the number 14 are not in A, B, or C, so they will go on the outside. Like that. And you've completed your set. Now typically, I would start by trying to do the middle part first um, before I did anything else. Sometimes you'll be given what's called a set statement. A set statement is just a list of operations that they want you to do. Um, and what you'll need to do is you'll need to verify whether two set statements are equal or not. The easiest way for this verification is to create a Venn diagram of each of the statements and see if you are discussing equivalent regions of the Venn diagram. If the Venn diagrams turn out identical, then you have equivalent or equal statements. So I'm going to show you an example really quick. First, they have the intersection of A and B, and they want you to find the complement of that. And then they have the complement of A union, the complement of B, and the question is, are these two sets equal? So the easiest way to do this is to create a Venn diagram. So I'm going to make, create a Venn diagram for each scenario. So in this problem, we only have two sets, A and B. So I'm only going to need two circles in my Venn diagram. Circle A and circle B. Okay, now I need to follow my order of operations. So the first thing I need to do is I need to find A intersection B. Okay, so A intersection B is going to be where A and B overlap. So that's going to be the middle wedge between those two circles. Then I need to move to the outside and I need to find the complement. The complement of this is going to be our solution. So essentially, we want to shade everything in the problem except A intersection B. So this would be everything except the middle wedge. So if you're looking at this, the blue shading represents the solution of A intersection B not. Okay, now let's look at the second one. Let's create a Venn diagram for that. We're going to have set A and we're going to have set B. Now this one doesn't have parentheses so you're going to have to do the right and the left hand side separate. So first thing we need to do is find the complement of A. So the complement of A is everything that is not in the A circle. Okay. The next thing we need to do is we need to find the complement of B. So the complement of B is everything that is not in the B circle. And that's the complement of B. Last, we need to find, oh, I didn't finish shading, sorry. 
Last, we need to find the union of these two sets. The union is going to be anything that's shaded purple or anything that's shaded yellow. And I'll do that in blue. So if you notice, you've again shaded everything but the intersection. So if you notice that the Venn diagrams are identical to each other, you have proved that these two statements, the intersection of A, B, complement, and the complement of A union the complement of B, are equivalent statements. They're equal statements. Just so you know, you have officially just proved the first special law called De Morgan's Law. De Morgan had a couple of discoveries and he proved that the complement of the intersection is equivalent to the union of the complements. De Morgan's second law um, just reverses the union and the intersection. His second law states the union of the or the complement of the union is equal to the intersection of the complements. Um, it's not super important that you have these memorized. It's just um, a neat proof that goes along with what we're doing. And we'll discuss this again in Chapter 3.